What's up, guys? Welcome to Untamed and Unhinged Reptile Podcast. Today's guest is South Bay Reptiles, Josh, and our co-host, Tanner, from Good Exotics. What's up, brother? What's up? What's up, y'all? So go ahead. You already know the drill. Tell everybody about yourself. Tell where they can find you. You already know all that. All right. What's up, y'all? I'm Josh, South Bay Reptiles, SB Reptiles. Uh, you guys can find me everywhere, really. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. TikTok's a little different, but uh, Instagram more for the reptiles. YouTube definitely for the educational reptile stuff. We're actually, we actually just started myself and AE uh, Adler. We just started going uh, crazier on the uh, on the YouTube side of things. So we're going to be doing a lot more educational, family friendly content on YouTube. And then uh, TikTok's kind of like the adult swim of what I do on on reptiles. Then Instagram's more of the uh, show off, uh, you know, what I'm breeding and whatnot, what kind of genetics I'm working with, which I've been slacking on a little bit. There's my boy Penny right there. And um, and then Facebook's more like community post. So I'm involved in quite a few of the communities on there. I, I kind of – I do and I don't stay on Facebook. I, I go on there and I check every now and then to just see what everyone's up to. But I don't really comment too much unless uh, there's a topic that I'm like really, really involved in, which recently has been like boas or, um, or you know, obviously New Caledonian geckos. I mean, that will always be a, a big topic of mine and – the Burmese pythons. I have my I have my little group of people that we talk with each other about. So, you know, it's uh that that's what the platforms are, and that's where you can find me. Hell yeah! And then, so, what are some projects you're going to get into this year? Like, what are you going to work on? So we just pulled everything out of brumation. Uh, I just purchased some more stuff. Um, you know, uh, looks like every six months to a year, I'm always doing a new project, something new. You know, I'm out of space at this warehouse. So my my foremost and biggest project, uh, reptiles or in general? Well, what, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want me to hit on the topic in general or reptile based? Let's do reptiles first. Yeah, reptiles first. Reptiles first. So I'm taking another swing at my blackhead pythons. Uh, that's been one species I haven't been able to breed. I, you know, I guess it's that one and the Europlatus fimbriatus, which are... Uh, the leaf tail geckos from Madagascar. That's been two species that have been giving me a, a little bit of trouble. So those are uh, those are my projects that I'm really in depth in, that I'm really, really, really trying. But uh, I got into leeches again, which um, anyone who knows my story on leeches, you know, I, I lost uh, a, a very high end melanistic uh, a few years back, and you know, after raising it, investing so much in it and everything, you lose it to breeding. It hurts. So I got out of lychees completely. So after a few years of getting over it, I'm uh, diving headfirst back into lychees. Thanks to Ted over at South South Bay Lychees. So uh, you know he's taking care of me and whatnot. And uh, you know I'll talk to a few of my other boys like Doug Cooley and whatnot. And uh, I'm I'm pretty sure I'll get into them. And then obviously South Tex Gex. And uh, actually, funny enough, South Tex Gex just got me into a new project, another New Caledonian gecko as well, which is going to be my Saracenorums. So Sarah Sonorums is a new one I'm doing as well. I've been wanting to do those for a while again. Um, so aren't those hybrids though? No, Sarah Sonorums are not hybrids. Uh, people no? make people make like Cresty Chihua hybrids, but there you uh, go. That's what I'm thinking of. Look like it with that lack of a crest, but um, Sarah Sonorums are their own species within New Caledonia, including Eurodactyloides. So I'm also getting into all four or five species five. of Eurodactyloides. It's five, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we just uh, the uh, um, oh my god, what are they called? The uh, uh, Bowers. So the Bowers are like the basic of them. I forget. But uh, so yeah, I'm getting into the Eurodactyloides. Another, I guess you can call it a dwarf New Caledonian gecko. I'm just expanding the New Caledonian gecko stuff a lot. Uh, the anacondas. I'm not too like if I breed them, I breed them. I'm not too crazy about breeding them. It's uh same thing as I think I talked about last time on your podcast. I, you know, I don't think there's too many people out there who should own. You know, mainly snakes and anacondas. They're, they're just, they're, they're a lot. And, and, you know, owning them, uh, you'll learn. 
you'll learn very quickly. <laughs> Bro, I well, I want an anaconda. I want a yellow anaconda. So, I like I said, than... like I said, if you do breed, I'll buy one from you because I really do want one. That's what I want to work with next, bro. Yeah, but you know, you're you're older, and you know, a lot of people who want anacondas, you know, at least for me, it was when I was a kid. The three snakes I wanted was a Burmese python, reticulated python, and of course, the famous green anaconda. You know, so and you if want I would have three been, things that are huge. Yeah, I wanted all three of the world's biggest snakes. You know, the 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 staple big snakes in in any animal world. You know, so um. That was uh, that's what I wanted as a kid, and if I would have been given one as a kid, oh, I would have had it. And I don't know if I should have at that age. So Josh, that blue light makes you look sad. I, bro, I can't. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's another project I got into. Uh, Mantella. So they're like dart frogs. They're just obviously not from uh, uh, where dart frogs are from, from South America Central. These are uh, these are Madagascar. So these are Mantella species. They're they're like dart frogs basically so i got into those recently and aquatics so i did get into aquatics freshwater uh that that's another project that's a, another fun one which you know no one laugh at me okay but I, I was able to successfully breed guppies which as you guys know takes like no effort so uh, <laughs> so that that's funny. a step is a step yeah yeah step is a step well i'm trying to i'm trying to do some stuff i won't mention it on here but i kind of already have a plan of what I'm i'm trying to do with uh with the guppies I'm doing. I got some purebred ones. A lot of them are mudded up. So mm -hmm. I got some purebred ones and uh, I'm trying to do some fun stuff with them. I'll, I'll say that. So yeah. Yeah. From, from the last time that you came on this, well, not this podcast, but the last podcast, um, like what's what's been changing? Like what, what are the changes you've been going through? What are some like changes you've gone through since then? Um, Social media obviously is always gonna is always gonna uh, uh, really really put a number on on what you're doing. Uh, so I've been hitting social media a lot heavier recently, um, a lot lot heavier. Tanner could tell you a lot heavier. Uh, you know, I live stream for anywhere from five to six hours a day on TikTok, which is a really cool, really really cool community I have on there. And then, uh, like I said, the the YouTube that I'm doing, wow, Penny, uh, and then the YouTube that I'm doing is. Um, it is definitely taking a, a big part, but again, that's with AE, so he makes it a lot easier. It's uh, it's a lot though to do YouTube and all that, and and traveling to all these shows and whatnot. So I, I, I uh, what, what what's different is a lot of new animals. A lot of new, as you can tell, the warehouse is at max capacity. Max capacity. I have no space in here anymore, so I'm actually looking for a new warehouse as uh, as we speak. Actually, so I'm. Uh, I was actually going to ask that too if you were going to expand or. What are your what are your plans? Yeah, I'll never stop expanding. This is what my fourth warehouse. Um, technically, you know, I had I had two warehouses in here. One smaller, a bigger unit opened up, and I got this one in this uh, area. And then uh, I'm actually looking for double the size of this to um, to breed goldfish. That's funny. Um, to um, to expand again, bro. And yeah, I do want to, I do want to get into some more stuff. I did recently get into the aquatics and inverts, a, a few inverts as well. So, um, and then the, um, the amphibians as well. So I'm, I'm just, you know, spreading, spreading out a little bit, doing some more stuff. And, uh, of course with holdbacks getting a lot more prolific, I actually really need a new warehouse because, um, once I'm out of holdback space in my freedom breeder, I, I do need a few more freedom breeders so I can continuously move them over and transfer them until they make it to these cages behind me, which are where the boas breed. So all my breeder boas are what you see behind me in those cages. And then um, I have a weird cycle, the way I do things, you know, um, they go from a small free our vision. Then they go to a ARS, which is right behind me as well. Then they go to freedom breeder, larger freedom breeder, and then uh, the largest freedom breeder. And then once they're ready to breed, they go inside the enclosures. So there's a process. I need more space, I need more space. Can we see? I know you're working with frogs now, right? Dark frogs. Mantella, but yeah. Or don't they have a dark, 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 dark frogs? Dark frogs and mantella are different, but a lot of people call them dark frogs. Yeah. I was like, don't you have a tank already done? We can see. Yeah, I, I can. I can do this for you here. So I did a little nano tank inside of there, bioactive on the top, and then uh planted a uh, live plants and whatnot. I don't know if it'll be too good of a lighting for this, but um. 
Yeah, That's so we good. Did, uh, planted a, a mini nano tank in the front, and then uh, uh, you know everything live in here basically, and uh, have the full sump system connected to another fish tank down there. So it's spraying nothing but good of bacteria for one of my plants, and that way it doesn't contaminate my water uh, for the nano tank as well. So it's a whole yeah, that's a whole now, thing. Now, if people want to see it better, where could they go see it? Instagram, for sure. I'll be better at posting on Instagram and then YouTube. YouTube's where I'm going to be really in-depth about that stuff. The lighting sucks. I know, I know, AE. I know, bro. My lighting is a uh, uh, Adler right now would uh, it would be on, on top of me right now for this lighting. I'll tell you that. <laughs> this, that is the lighting king. The lighting king right there. That man is like, lighting is off. This man will cover half the sun if he has to. It's so funny. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. You had a 15 minute warning. You should have been prepared. Uh, you know what? You're right. No excuses. No excuses. Ridic I had time to get a Starbucks. Ridiculous of me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bro, I, literally, I, I literally had to slap a, a thumbnail before I can even get you a link, dude. And that took me five seconds. There you go. You did it. You did it. Okay. Get that link took 10 minutes. Like, yeah, that day, link took 10 minutes. My bad, bro. One but, day you'll be as old as me, okay? Uh, things are slower now. Now I'm joking. <laughs> Um, so what are some of the best projects like with the board morphs like what are some of the best projects to get involved with like the morphs wise on boas without exposing too much yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let, let me rephrase it what's a good what's a good subsection to start in what's a good starting point for breeding boas okay so if you want just a basic boa that has some good cover and you're a locality freak i would go with bcc so your true red tail boas, you know, but I, like there's some people in the hobby that, you know, they, they don't care for all these genetics. They just I, admire a really clean looking boa. I go yep. BCC, you know, uh, uh, true red tails are awesome. If you can get pokey grons, you know, amazing, but that will, that will cost you a little bit. But, uh, you know, those locality based boas are great. If not, you can get into BCI, boa constrictor imperator. And uh, that's what generally everyone does. And uh, you, I mean, you can go, I mean, the, the it, the stars are the limit with boas. That's what I'm really loving about boas is the polymorphism within each genetic and each trait and each, uh, you know, everything about them. No one boa is going to be the same. Even out of a litter, you have no one boa that's the same, which is really nice. And I'm really, really loving is they remind me a lot of geckos. You know, that's why I love geckos so much is, uh, the, and I mentioned this in countless time is the polymorphism within them or, or the variability within their patterns and colors and and everything about them, I, that's what I'm loving about boas. But BCI would probably be where most people are going to get into. If you like albino, you can go like a call albino, which are really easy to get into, you know, inexpensive snakes that are that are awesome. But, um, you know, you can have a call albino you can get for a few hundred bucks and throw one or two other specific genetics in there, you know, leopard or something. And, you know, you can be talking a few thousand dollars and whatnot. Um, so there's, there's a wide range to get into boas. Um, I would definitely – do your research first, you know, go on Morph Market maybe um, and just check out which ones you like, which ones pop out to you. You guys can go to reptile shows and check out some in person, which ones you really like, whether it be color or uh, or locality, stuff like that, which the locality for me really does based on color as well. But um, it also it also has to do a lot with size, but you have so many um, so many genetics you can get into. So um, something I, I would recommend is definitely looking into the colors and patterns you like something I'm really into right now is, is paradigm. So, you know, uh, you know, some people say paradigmy or par paradigmy, but it's paradigm. So paradigm is like, uh, it's, it's an albino. It's two strands of albino into one and you can throw so many genetics. I'll tell you one snake I'm working with right now. It's a Celtic paradigm, uh, IMG, uh, type one annery. Uh, so that, that's, a it's, a it's a big project. And, um, there, there's some stuff going down with that. That's going to be really, really crazy. Uh, if you want some really red stuff, you can get into the bloods, like the Burke bloods. Um, I, myself, I'll have a litter here pretty soon. And then um, DNA breeders, uh, my buddy over Anthony over there, they have all, all of uh, all of that blood stuff from uh, Burke's original collection. Mine are from Burke's original collection as well. So th there's a, a variety and array of boas you can get into. There's no real good answer for that. It's like same thing with geckos. You know, there's no good yeah. answer. But it's what do you like because you can have a $30 crested gecko you can have a $15,000 crested gecko you know as we're seeing right now on Morph Market which we won't get into that but um yeah don't get me started on that one no, no I won't <laughs> I won't um 
you know, stuff like that. So, so there, there's a, a variety and all you got to do is your research and see what you really like and what you want to work with, whether it be a pet or a breeding project to go down the line with, you know? Yeah. And one of the questions I've been asked most in the last two weeks, what is the difference? Cause you mentioned both BCCs and BCIs. Yeah. That is probably the most common question about boas that I have been asked. Okay, so a boa constrictor constrictor are the true red tails. You know how people are always saying red tail boa? A boa constrictor imperator technically isn't a red tail boa. They don't have that same reds. If you look up a red tail boa, you're going to get like Surinams. You know the Surinam yes. boa? So Surinams, get, Guyanas. Exactly. Local, that's why I say locality boa more yeah. than anything. And, and I, I'm wanting you to explain it on a I have no experience level. Because that's the people who are asking. They're people that, oh, I got this bow. I don't know what it is. Can you tell me, is it a BCC or BCI? I've been asked that exact question three times in the last two days. Okay, so uh, funny, there are ways to tell. Uh, one would be the tail, for sure, for sure, the tail. You're going to end up with really true reds on that. Anywhere there's red, you're going to have a lot more red than there is browns on a imperator, right? Um, another thing is the actual arrows or what are they called? The saddles, I guess you would say on the boat. Yeah, the saddles. They do come up to a peak way differently on your locality-based BCC than your BCI. BCI are kind of flatter. They kind of have multiple points and breaks where the BCI or BCC have like a clean, clean, clean arrow almost looking at them as well with the head stamp. Although I don't agree with the head stamp because once you throw certain genetics into BC, uh, BCI, you can get that almost exact head stamp that is on a bcc so that it, it, i don't go with the head stamp i'd go with saddles and i'd go with the red coloration on the tail and bccs generally can get larger than bci um but again their locality differences you have two separate places completely that they come from um and that's really your main differences all the genetics and crazy genetics you see are mainly all with bci you really don't see that with bcc um you do see that with central americans though so the central american boas you do see certain stuff um like the fires like true fires i actually believe true fires were bcc i believe so, they're colombians aren't they that's what i'm thinking yeah so i, I think that those are those are true yeah those are colombian yeah so yeah that's what i was thinking few genetics but not a lot but then you have central american stuff where you do have certain genetics like you have certain motleys that are central american motleys you know and uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, you breed Motley to Motley together with BCI, it's actually fatal. You breed Motley to Motley together with Central American, it's completely fine. You know, so um, there's that. And then you have, uh, uh, again, the, the Colombian or B BCC stuff where you have fire. I believe they have albino, true albino. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on that. I don't work with too much BCC stuff. I do Central American and BCI. Uh, and then I have one. As a kid, I grew up with this thing. She's about to be 16 years old, you know, uh, a BCI, BCC hybrid, you know, a, a mix, which I, I'm very against doing hybridization. I'm not against it. I just don't do it. Uh, but, you know, that's my girl. That's my that's my baby that I've had forever. And she's a massive, massive, almost 10 foot boa, you know. So uh, that's that would be the difference if I had to explain it to a beginner, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, you don't have to get started on hybrids. Most of the people that Anyone who has actually yeah. talked to me and brought up hybrids all know my thought process on it. What so, is your thought process on it, Tanner? Oh, I can't. I, I am 100% opposed to hybrid breeding that affects the longevity of the life of the animal. So okay. a prime example, and people are going to knock it, the uh, Crested Gecko, Gargoyle Gecko hybrids. Crested Gecko, Chihuahua Gecko. No, they're, they are doing, there's people doing Gargoyle geckos and cresteds. I didn't think that was viable, but okay. It's it's not. There's a 10% uh, viability rate and a three-year lifespan. Interesting. Yeah. So why, why do it if it's three-year lifespan? That makes no sense. Bro. Because people people will buy it. People will pay for it, so people do it. I mean, that, that's the nature of the business, though. You know, and a lot of people don't like talking about this is if you're a breeder – you know, there's a difference between a keeper, a hobbyist, and a breeder, right? Yep. And you can have your own morals towards them, 100%. I think every person has their own rights towards the morals per things. Um, but I think a lot of people hate talking about the business aspect of this thing, and, and you are in it to make money. If you're a breeder, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't have a warehouse like this to not make money. You know what I mean? That that that's mm -hmm. that's where 
I think a lot of people fail to come to the realization that you are in this for money. Now that shouldn't put a lack on your husbandry. That's for correct. Sure. That shouldn't put a lack on inbreeding so damn much that everything's coming out with one eye sticking out of its toe. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Then, then, you know, you got to question your morality when it comes to breeding, but uh, you know, when it comes to the longevity of it, I mean, dude, there's certain animals, you know, tarantulas, for example, you know, um, you know, males are sold last minute to breed and uh, males don't survive that long as I've learned, you know? So yep, there's a thin line on that one. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think I have a, a set opinion on that yet, to be honest, on the longevity of them. I just more so on the health. I definitely am on the health of them though. Yeah. And the, the reason that the longevity, the lifespan of it will make a difference is can you guarantee an animal that would typically have a 15 year life will have the best life if its lifespan's cut down to three years? You can give it the best life. I mean, yeah, you, you, opinion, you can give anything the best life. I mean, I'll be, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I had a gecko that, uh, I tried, um, I did try inbreeding for a second, uh, for one too many generations when I first started the crested geckos and, uh, I, I ended up patching out one that was very deformed. That's when I stopped and I realized, you know, I got, I got to check myself on this. And uh, he, he called him the hunchback of Del, and, uh, or Del Noir. And uh, he has, um, you know, he has a hunchback and a crooked neck. And you know what? He's insanely healthy. He's an adult male now. And uh, he's ridiculously healthy. He jumps around. He eats his Pangea. He hunts his crickets. He gets his humidity. He sheds correctly. Um, I think it's a learning curve of myself, you know, having to check myself and realize like, uh, this is why people hate inbreeding, you know what I mean? And, and had to learn the hard way, you know, but, um, I give it a great life. It lives in a 12 by 12 by 18, just like the rest of my crested geckos. It has the exact same care, exact same diet, exact same husbandry. So, um, that's where I'm at. Even if something lives six months, you know, uh, what are they called? Um, praying mantis that I got into some of them only live nine months to a year and three months. Right. Yeah. Uh, I still give them the best life possible. I put them in nice cages, nice netted cages with plants and all that stuff. Are they going to survive a long time? No. Can some of them uh, die while molting? You know, they can fall off. Absolutely. But you oh, know, always my job to give them the best life they can in the time that they are here. Hell yeah. And, and speaking on that, I want to ask this question because since we're already right here and you're talking about like working with all these reptiles. So what is the most rewarding, rewarding part of keeping, you know, your warehouse, your animals, selling the animals. Like what is rewarding? What do you get from that? I love when people hit me back up with reptiles that they bought for me. You know, I, I, I love when like I get to keep a trace of like so-and-so bought it. How's it doing? You know what I mean? And now they bred it and I can see the babies they made with my stuff, you know, because you work hard to get in these genetics. You work hard to, you know, pay into some of these genetics. You know, some of these geckos I bought, I've overpaid for tremendously just to be able to get in a project and skip my way forward, you know, um, you pay a lot, a lot. I mean, Tana, you've heard me brag a little bit on TikTok, you know, that there's certain, oh, yeah. I've definitely overpaid for, but it, it's dope that oh, I yeah. can read that with something I've bred or something I've produced because I bought into these projects. And I love when people hit me up. Someone that just hit me up was uh, uh, Travis, uh, Travis Null TK Exotics. He just hit me up with a garball gecko that I sold him. And I mean, dude, this thing turned out, red i mean unbelievably red right and i knew it was gonna have red i didn't think it was gonna be that covered i knew it was gonna be covered but i mean seeing that i'm like okay now i have eight hold back gargles because i'm like okay these all came from that one they all look the same as that baby i had to go back to the skew number figure out which one it was i was like okay so it's these parents this is how it looked as that size which ones look that same color they're all holdbacks in it right now until i figure out which one it turns out like that so i love when people hit me up I love being able to move forward with my with my projects and saying I started here and now look where I'm at. You know, it, it's dope even for my own bragging to myself kind of, right? Um, two, I love breeding. I mean, it's like it's like it's like living art, you know. It's literally you create your own art with some of these animals. And I keep going back to geckos with this because you know, I'm 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 like madly in love with geckos. I always have been, but recently, man, these geckos are like I I, I love them, you know, they're they're awesome. But um you know, stuff like that, excuse me, um, stuff like that, man, it's dope, like, seeing people who are able to get your stuff, or people who buy stuff from you, and they brag about it, you know, or so happy about it, uh, recently, you guys had, a uh, uh, Brayden on here, Brayden and Mike, 
Yep. So you know, that Burmese python that that uh, I gave them, you know, he loves it. He wanted a Burmese python. He had one already. He wanted one of mine. He has it, and uh, that's why I'm honestly doing the YouTube so family friendly and kid friendly is because I'm seeing more and more kids that look up to me, and like I looked up to other breeders when I were they their age, you know. So it's kind of like I feel obligated to do what they were doing, you know, for me. So it's like a pay it forward kind of thing, you know what I mean? So. It's just cool to see all that in everyone's life you can impact, whether it be breeding or emotionally or or just on a scale of they just love the animal you bred and, and they, they genuinely enjoy every aspect about it. You know what I mean? Or people who just want to support you, you know, like it's freaking cool. It's cool. I like it. Bro, and I've seen I want to I say this because I've seen you gone through ups and I've seen you gone through the downs. And dude. Every time you're down, you still come back up, bro. I don't know how you do it, but you fight and you keep kicking ass. I mean, <laughs> I've been, I've been there. I've been, I've been down. I've been come back stronger. I come back harder. I mean, I don't know what it is that that you know keeps you fighting, but um, kids really do look up to you. I seen you on TikTok, bro, and the kids are like, dude, they love you, bro. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Honestly, Thank you, bro. Thank you. Like, yeah. Couple things. So I know, Josh, I know you've got a ton of stuff you got to get done still today. And, and this was a last second we threw it at you. 100%. But there's two more things that I think everyone will enjoy. So Daenerys just came by there the other day. Yes. Oh, yeah. can, you show, can you can you go and get what everyone, uh, what, what they brought you and show everyone what you got? Uh, well, actually, the tarantula is molting right now, so I cannot... The uh, the mantis is molting. I, let me see if I can bring it over here. Um, what about the millipede? The yeah, let me see. I'd have to find it. The millipede. <laughs> I didn't know he got a millipede. He got he got a baby African giant. Bro, I saw I saw they were there, but um. Let me see if I can find this thing. Man. I didn't know he got a tarantula. I, I saw that he was shaking. Yeah. I got him. That's why he was shaking. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I got a versi color for her, an adult female versi color. I got a, uh, a Darth Vader mantis or a Vader mantis. I said Darth Vader because Star Wars, but uh, a Vader mantis. And then I got this African millipede. Oh, and a G enchinata, which is a velvet spider. Really cool. And then this African millipede, which they dig a lot. So yep. if you can find it, I'll show you definitely. But we can uh, we can keep talking as I look for this thing if you want. <laughs> well, we all everybody here supports Daenerys. And I will put that out. Just every single time. You last time I think I was wearing my Daenerys uh brown box special shirt. Oh my god. Oh my god, yeah. My hater shirt. Yeah, yeah. hater shirt. <laughs> Bro, I got mine too. I was like, man. Stuff. That girl's awesome. Honestly, being able to talk to her and her parents, they're just amazing, amazing family. Uh genuinely just super amazing. Okay, wow, I found that pretty quick to be honest. Hey, um, that's a good thing. Yeah, let me shake this back down and get all that dirt back down i have it in my hand get these leaves back in here uh, i don't know if i'm going to be able to show this too well it's not like giant yet but uh, they, they brought you a baby didn't they yeah it's probably around um i want to say three or four inches but it's sitting there on my hand right there oh yeah little tiny little thing yeah hey, oh hold on hold on hold on, hold on. while you're showing that off i want to ask you a question like yeah, when you sure. work since you're working with with, bo with boas, are you like trying to change, like the morph, like the game in boas? Like are you trying to create something different? Very, you different. know, very very different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very. Different. I, I, I was like, all okay, right. So as of recent, I'm kind of. I think there's a place for everyone with breeding, right? We can agree on that. Oh yeah. Um, but like. What I meant was like to change your current like market in boas. Like, are you trying to? Oh, the market, the market's stable in boas. Boas are so hard to breed; they're not going to crash. It's not going to crash like the ball python market or you know the hog nose market or the crested gecko market. It's not going to crash. Um, it, it's they're way harder to breed. So it, it's something that you're not going to crash that market whatsoever. However hard you you can try as hard as you want, a uh, you, you know. You're not going to put that much effort into breeding a boa to crash your own market. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and yeah, man, no, no, boa market's safe, 100% safe, untouched, unscathed. It's um, probably the only one that is. Yeah, yeah. Right now, <laughs> yeah, that market is unscathed still to this day. And <laughs> um, it's funny. Um, 
<laughs> but here's my look and take on breeding anything. I, I without being mean about it or, or making feel any, anyone that they shouldn't breed. Um, I personally, or anyone who's trying to make a name for themselves while breeding, or anyone who's making an impact in their community in each niche within the grand scheme of reptiles, um, you know, a niche being, you know, boas or superdors, whatever you're in, whichever niche you're in, I think you should be breeding to make something new, to make something relevant. Because if you're breeding the same thing every Joe Blow is breeding, you do not stand out. You know, you end up being the exact same breeder as every other garage breeder. And I'm not saying garage breeder is just a term we use, but it's not like a bad thing. I started in my garage, you know, I started in my room, you know, um, it, it's, you want to breed something where a, it's too hard to breed where, you know, people are going to be like, wow, you were able to breed that, you know, there's not many people to, to go against you on that Two, a genetic that's so new to the market that everyone's just like, I have to have that in order to bring it into my projects. Or three, something that is very, very, very solid in the market. For example, with geckos again, is tricolor extreme harlequin geckos. That is tricolors and lilies. If you've noticed the market, well, even lilies have crashed. Even yep, lilies have crashed. Crashed. But what hasn't crashed in the crested gecko community is tricolor extreme harlequin crested geckos. That is one gecko that I think will never crash because, again, that polymorphism with tricolor. No matter what you breed, you're always going to get a different form, a different pattern, a tricolor. Yeah. You're you're always going to be reaching for that full coverage, full, full coverage where there's no base color, you know, and then you have to extend your colors. Then some people want to extend the whites, extend the browns, extend the blacks, exp extend the, the tiny bits of oranges, you know, whatever it may be. Or you want a red base and you want the red base on top of it with tricolor, you know, uh, a solid white back where you want to really – a dashed back, you want a pinstripe in there, you want your quad stripe extreme harlequin a tricolor. You know, there's so much to do that you you want to make yourself relevant. Again, I, I know that can sound a little harsh, but you want to make yourself relevant. However, here's the twist to that is if you're getting into it and let's say you're 12 years old, right? <clears throat> and you just want to learn how to breathe, there's nothing wrong as long as you know you'll have the market for it or you can house those animals. If you go and get yourself to, you know, uh, more inexpensive colubrids, inexpensive ball pythons, inexpensive hognose, something, whatever it may be that's inexpensive, to learn how to breed. You know, something that, that gets your, your foot wet a little bit, you know, where you can, okay, this is something I like breeding. This is something that didn't take a, such a big toll on me that it's not worth it. You know, something you enjoy doing. And, and that's fine. I think that's why I say I think there's a place for everyone when it comes to breeding. But if once you dive deeper into it, it's those, and this is what I mean by garage breeders, is the ones who <clears throat> take your most basic $10 Petco gecko and just breed thousands of them. You know, yep. where it's, what are you doing? You're not, you're not taking care of thousands of them. You know, you're not giving them all 100% the exact care that they need, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over a little cough and cold. Um <clears throat> Um, that, that's the type of breeding where I'm like, okay, that's no good. You know, that, that's where, that's what I mean by garage breeder. That, that's where I'm like, that's where you yeah, draw the line. That's where I do draw the line. hundred percent. Yes. But getting your foot wet breeding once or twice, something like that. No problem. I don't see any issue with it. As long as you can house them correctly, you're good. But even for myself, you would think a large warehouse. I mean, how many geckos do you think I'm breeding a year? And keep in mind, I, I do breed a lot. I also have an employee, but end of the day, he broke his ribs. I can still take care of this all on my own. You would think I'm breeding if you had to guess. You know what? You haven't seen me in a while, Chris. I know you know Tanner. Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you know, yeah. Chris. You haven't seen me in a while. How many geckos do you think I'm breeding, bro? I have a whole aisle, maybe about 600 square feet dedicated to geckos. Sure, I'll be like 500. I'm only breeding maximum 250 geckos a season. I was going to say 200, too. Damn it. You should have. So, so maximum I'll do that. And that's out of three species about to be a fourth and fifth species now. And I'll still keep that number. That number is because I know I can handle it. I know that if everything hits the fan, all this has to be taken care of me solely like it is right now. 
I, I can take care of that. I can handle them. I can give them the correct husbandry. And I know I have a market to sell them. And if I don't sell them, I know I can house them efficiently and, you know, make sure they're all healthy and growing up. And once they do hit adulthood, I know I can house all the adults as well. So that's why I keep my number at 250. So that means I'll be breeding less of Chihuahuas, less of Cresties, less of Gargs to break in the Saracenorums. And then I'm going to take away from each one of those a little bit less to put in the lychees. Now that you're a Dactyloides, they're so small that, and they, they're only going to produce what? We'll get lucky and say eight babies a year, right? That's nothing to take care of extra. You know what I mean? So, it, right? If that, right? If that, exactly. Depending on your setup, uh, anywhere from three to 12. So, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So, no, it's, eight, not like, eight, it's not like morning geckos. Eight was a good, eight was a good rough number in there. Yeah. So, you know, let's even 12, let's say. I have the space for that. I have the time for it still. Something I can still do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, never buy more than you can chew 100%. And I learned that from giving myself too much to chew. A lot of people, like, hate on the people who are like, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're being a, a kennel breeder. You're breeding too much, you know? I, I think if you can master that before becoming one of those breeders, awesome. But then there's people like myself who... I guess I should have I should have been a uh, uh, ADHD reptiles instead of salivary reptiles because I can't focus on one thing, right? Um, I've been at that position where I put too much on my plate, and I'm like, this is killing me. I, I mean, I disappeared from social media for what? Probably a solid four months, you know, because mm -hmm. I had way too many boas, way too many Burmese pythons, way too many retics, you know, way too many, and I had to take a step back so I could take care of them, sacrifice social media, which is an income for me as well. And you, to take care of all those, I had to buy another freaking rack for those things, which buying racks is not cheap. Um, you know, I, I was able to do it, but I understand now that balance that I need, there's a certain amount of animals I'm able to do, you know, a certain amount of animals I'm willing to breed. I would love to breed my Burmese python to create some potential very, very high end pie Burmese pythons. However, I don't have the space for it as of right now because of what's going to breed not the space i actually do have the space i don't have the time to do it so she's not getting bred i have one burmese python that i really really want to breed i'm not breeding her to my pied you know and that that's going to set me back a little bit but it fits with my schedule and that's where you have to learn those things and sometimes you learn the hard way by doing it uh, a little too much and having to sacrifice something that you didn't want to sacrifice and for me that was social media for a bit and, uh, you know, I took care of it. So all those animals were still healthy. I found new homes for them. I was able to sell them. And once that simmered down, like I said, it took me about four months. I was able to get back on track with social media, and, you know, good as ever. Well, and I'm going to go back to, I know you're, you're strict on time. You've got some stuff you got to go deal with. So, Chris, do you have, and, and I'm going to give you the question you always give me. Do you have any last questions for him? Because I know he has to run. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, since the last time, since the last time we talked, sorry, since the last time we talked, um, I mean, I'm asking you the same question, you know, you know, like what is one thing that you could change in the hobby? Like one reason why, since everything that we've seen, like what is one thing you could change from the last time from the, what, how long ago was that shit? Maybe a year. Yeah. It's been about a year since the last time I had you on. Yeah, about a year. Um, one thing I could change, man. Um, that's not just one thing you can change about you. That's one thing in the entire industry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Change. One thing, like it was, it could be anything. I know what everyone wants to hear. Everyone wants to hear fix the drama. Um, you can call me a little too realistic to say that. I think any any community that you're in, no matter what. There has to be drama. There has to be, you know, a balance to things, and that takes negative and positive. So, do I wish everything was was happy and rainbows? Sure. Is it realistic or is it healthy? No. Um, man, yeah, I, I, would have to sure. say, I would have to say people being, you know, as of recently, my my biggest thing is is being nicer to like the kids, man. You know, like. That that one is one thing that I'm seeing more prolific is is a lot of adult breeders and people who have been in the hobby aren't as nice to new people trying to join our hobby. So if I wanted to change something, it would be some of these guys to kind of get their you know what together and um and, and 
understand that you have to be welcoming into this hobby. You know, you have to do, they have to do a better job at welcoming in new people and building them up and realize that you want them to be competition for you one day. And that competition is healthy. It's not a negative thing, you know, and um, that, that would be one big thing I'd have to change is that perspective, that mindset. That's it. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And cyber bullying pretty much. I would change that. That's just a lot, a lot of that. Yeah, but uh, you know, like I said, you look at it from. Um, yeah, really, basically, yeah. I get it. I get it. But dude, I appreciate you for the time you've given us. Just the thirty minutes. I mean, appreciate you like saying, yeah, let's do it. I wasn't expecting to go today, but I mean, I wish we had an hour. But <laughs> you know, because yeah, not here yet. I'll be honest. I'm waiting for a plumber to get here, guys, to my warehouse right now. So that's why they I mean, let it go. I mean. I have a few more minutes if you want, bro. I mean, uh, like five more minutes, we can call it if you want. I mean, if you have any last minute questions, by all means. Go I mean, ahead. unless you want to go co-host with us over there on the on the other one right now, I'll send you the link. I don't know if I have time to co-host because I'll only be there for like five minutes. If, if yeah, because that's going to be a whole another hour. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. No, I'll let you guys go take care of your thing. We'll <laughs> you have time, well, it's, it's like 45 minutes, but yeah. You're, you're good, well, bro. Josh, you go ahead and switch on over to the other one with us. You just stay on the background and watch. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'll hop off real quick and then uh, and then I'll check you guys out doing that. Okay. All right, big up. So I'll be in the background. Okay. Do what you want. With me. If you want to pull me up, you're more than welcome to. All right. All right. All right. Oh all right, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll send you the link then. I'm, I got to send you a new link because this one's gonna be closed. All right. Sounds good. Bro. All right. All right. Uh, oh, wait, real quick before we go, a positive message. Positive message. A positive message to everyone watching. What do you, what can you say positive to everybody? Be more welcoming into our hobby for newcomers. That's it. That would be my positive message. Be more welcoming to newcomers coming into our hobby. On that note, guys, I mean, you got anything else, Tanner? Now, nah. other than... <laughs> We're going to be back on here in about five more minutes. Yeah, we're going to be back on in five minutes, guys. Uh, other than that, on that note, for this podcast, this one's over. Y'all have a great day. We love you. Peace out. Remember, lift others up. Don't put others down. And uh, just, you know, be all sales. Be yourselves. Be transparent. Tell the truth because we will, you know, people know when you're not telling the truth. That's all I got to say. Other than that, y'all have a good night. Love you. Have a good night, everybody.